couple of videos ago, I, I asked for opinions on whether to use the sapwood on the end of my, on the edge of my ebony fretboard and uh, got a lot of comments, thank you. <laughs> but there wasn't uh, a lot of love, shall we say, for sapwood. And I, I feel the need to do a video to kind of redress the balance. Um, my, my love letter to sapwood, if you like. Um, so, so here it is. Uh, first of all, we have to define what we mean by sapwood. And I can recommend a really good book, Bruce Hoadley, Understanding Wood. And it, it's surprisingly readable. It's, it's a very good book. It covers everything. <laughs> um, Go buy yourself a copy. Take it to bed with you. Um, it's uh, <laughs> it, it's, a, it's a really good read. So let's define what we mean by sapwood. Sapwood is wood which carries sap. Okay, um, <laughs> it's it's the ring of usually lighter coloured wood around the outside of the tree and it carries all the moisture, the, the nutrients up the tree, the, uh, the things needed for the tree's metabolism. And as the tree grows, more rings are added around the outside and the, the inner rings of sapwood get older and older and older and eventually they, they cease to function. I, I hesitate to use the word die there but um, they, 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 they cease to function, they get clogged up with what we call extractives and these are the, the, uh, the chemicals, the uh, wood poo <laughs> I guess you could call it, um, the, the leftovers, the metabolites of the tree's processes uh, that give the heartwood its colour and these are things like tannin and turpentine and it's what gives ebony its really dark colour and uh, usually sapwood is light, heartwood is dark. Not always the case. I think this is Douglas fir and when I got this freshly cut this was actually darker so it was light and dark but for some reason as things have oxidized to being exposed to the air um, the colors have reversed. Um, it's not been exposed to sun, so it's not like this is a bleaching process, but uh, it, it's not always the case that the, the sapwood is um, lighter than the heartwood. Um, a useful example, this, because it shows just how much sapwood there can be. And what you find is that in uh, fast-growing, um, usually broadleaf trees, but um, fast growing trees, they need a lot of moisture, a lot of sap, a lot of nutrients to, to grow. And so there is a, proportionally a much higher um, amount of sapwood, and that's, that's what we see there. And in species like, species? Species, such as maple, it's, it's nearly all sapwood. Um, in fact, the heartwood tends to get thrown away, what little heartwood there is. Um, so that brings me to the first myth, if you like, that we that we throw away sapwood. We we don't. <laughs> in fact, the timber industry has a vested interest in using as much of the tree as possible. It is true that in in species such as laburnum, and which isn't really grown commercially, but uh, you and again not really grown commercially. Um, we 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 want to use the heartwood as opposed to the sapwood although I, I like the contrast between the two, I like the oysters. Um, most of the time we want to use the whole tree and so you have woods like cherry, fruit woods, cherry and pear, um, where there is quite a contrast in colour between the, the heartwood and the sapwood and there is a process of steaming which is used and this leaches these extractives from the heartwood to the uh, sapwood. I've seen this steaming process as described as bleaching the, the heartwood. I, I don't think that's the case. Leaching maybe rather than bleaching but the, it spreads the, heart, the, spreads the extractives out and the uh, heartwood becomes a little less uh, vibrant in colour but it, it evens the colour out and the whole tree can get used. So I just say this to emphasise that we don't automatically throw away the sapwood. Um, other than maybe for aesthetic reasons where we want the, the richness of the heartwood. 
And that comes brings me to the, the second myth. Um, the sapwood, well, the myth is that the sapwood is weak and you have to get rid of it. This is just not the case. The, the, the strength of um, the, the sapwood is, is just the same as the heartwood. And you can see this logically, really, when you consider that heartwood used to be sapwood. There is no difference between the heartwood and the sapwood in terms of the cell structure, and it's the cell structure which gives it its strength. And in fact, there are woods such as <laughs> spruce, where it's, it's almost impossible to tell the difference between the heartwood and the sapwood. And we, we, we use the whole tree. There's no difference in, in the strength. But this is true across, across all woods, really. It's just a fundamental property, the fact the cell structure is the same. Now, there are certain aspects uh, of the tree where there is a difference, a marked difference, between the sapwood and the heartwood. The sapwood is more vulnerable to insect attack and fungus. Um, the sapwood is full of the nutrients, all the sugars that the, that the worms just, just love, and so they'll go for the, the sapwood. And in fact, the heartwood, some of the extractives, can be toxic to, uh, to insects, so they leave them alone. And I've just realised I've got a very good example of fungal attack on, on sapwood. So this is spalted birch. It is an example of sapwood that has been attacked by fungus. And doesn't it look beautiful? So you see, I can, eat, I can spin a weakness into a positive any way you like. I, I love this wood. And it is, it's stable. It might not be as strong as, as on fungus um, sapwood but it's perfectly usable and is used widely in the guitar world. There is one other aspect of, of sapwood that uh, is different to um, hard heartwood. I keep saying hardwood don't I? Heartwood. Um, and that is when it's green, when it's freshly cut. There is a lot more moisture in uh, the sapwood and so you have to be careful to dry it properly but once it's dry it's perfectly stable I mean this 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 is now dry and uh, no longer any problems with the fungus um, continuing um, so yeah so it's not really a concern um, once you've got nice dry stable wood sapwood heartwood brilliant now coming back to our fretboard which is now buried somewhere over here We don't need to be worried about the strength of the sapwood. It will hold um, frets no problem at all. There is, is no measurable difference. Having said that, I haven't found studies specific to ebony, but as, as a general rule, it is true that sapwood is equally as strong as heartwood. But this is where things start to get a little bit hazy because anecdotally, people will tell you that the heartwood is harder than the sapwood. Now, I certainly haven't experienced this. I've planed both sides of this and both felt equally hard. Actually, this was slightly sort of corrugated when I first planed it and it, it really felt like I was going through iron. Um, this side was much smoother, but I think that was just the nature of how this had been rough sawn. But what do we mean by hardness? Um, because what the, the wood scientists mean by hardness is very different to perhaps what, what we mean on a day to day by how hard something is. Um, when we talk about hardness in wood, there is a Janker figure that is quoted, the Janker hardness. And this is its uh, resistance to compression. Uh, to measure it, we try and drive a ball bearing into the surface. And we try to drive, it's about a 10 millimetre ball bearing, and we try to drive it into the surface and measure how much force is needed to get it halfway in. And that's the Janker figure. There is um, a slightly different way of doing that. I think it's Brinell or Brinell um, method, which is similar but different. It's, it's a ball bearing, you try to drive it into the surface, but you put a ton of weight on it and see how far in it goes. And this is a, a test that's used in uh, more widely in engineering. And it, you can compare different substances, both wood, you know, you, you can get a figure for different types of metal. 
um, but not really appropriate for wood. If you consider doing that with balsa wood, you'd just smash straight through it. Um, I, I mentioned Brinell because one of the studies I looked at, which I'll, I'll link below the video, it looked at oak um, to see if there was any difference in the hardness between the heartwood and the sapwood. And you'll find this with, with studies is that they tend to be on the more common woods because there's a commercial interest there. Um, we, with ebony, there's no real commercial interest in using the sapwood. Um, people want the black wood of ebony just for aesthetic reasons. And so there's no commercial pressure to use the whole tree, which is a shame. And this is something Bob Taylor has been addressing. I think Taylor Guitars are now trying to cultivate the, the whole tree and so less web, uh, ebony goes to waste. Um, I'll see if I can dig out a link to um, a Taylor video, but uh, go to the Taylor Guitars um, YouTube channel and, and you will find uh, Bob Taylor talking about the use of ebony. Um, the study I found on oak uh, studied three different species of oak and <laughs> they couldn't find any difference between the hardness of the heartwood and the sapwood. So again, you, you hear stories about the fact that some species, I keep wanting to say species, some species of heartwood are um, harder than, than the sapwood. But when it comes to, to digging up actual figures to back this up, it falls short again and again. And there are a lot of extractives in oak, um, tannin uh, being one. And so it doesn't seem to give the cells any support when it comes to crushing resistance. But when we talk about hardness, it's not so much how difficult it is to dent the wood. What we usually mean on a day to day is how resistant to wear it is. And anecdotally, again, you'll hear stories that heartwood tends to blunt tools, uh, chisels and planes, whereas sapwood less so. And I can see that there might be some truth in that because the extractives could be a little bit abrasive. But just because something is abrasive doesn't mean that it's hard. Um, an example being my uh, waterstone, my Norton waterstone. It's 250 grit, it's very abrasive, but it's very, very soft and has just been wearing away to nothing. So I tried to find some studies on the wear resistance of, of woods, uh, comparing heartwood and sapwood, and I drew a big blank. I found three studies, I'll, I'll try to put links underneath, um, that looked at the wear resistance of different woods, but they didn't even mention differences between heartwood and sapwood which kind of makes me suspect there aren't any differences. Um, certainly from all that I've learned about the properties of wood and the cellular structure being the same, I could believe that the wear resistance is exactly the same for um, heartwood and sapwood. It's just coming up with the evidence of that. And I'm not sure the evidence is out there. So <laughs> if you can find any studies um, that support or, or disprove uh, differences between um, sapwood and heartwood, um, let me know. Um, I need hard facts here, actual figures, test results, uh, rather than just hearsay. Um, but I hope I've gone some way to address this... Um, I'm not going to use the word hate, but this, this lack of love of sapwood. I, I think variation in grain, vive la différence. I'm going to leave you with one final thing and that is to show you my favourite guitar. <laughs> my Faith High Gloss Venus. Uh, spruce top, Indian rosewood back and sides and down the middle, <laughs> sapwood. <laughs> <laughs>